As we learned in previous videos, white cells are a diverse group with many different functions. In this video, we'll dive deeper to understand the different types and their functions. But before we do this, let's quickly look at a few facts. Although white cells vary in size, generally they are the largest cell type found circulating in the blood. They live in the lymph system, where many are stored, they circulate in the blood, and they are also found in the tissues throughout the body, always ready to spring into action. As a group, all the different types of white cells together make up less than 1% of total blood volume. Some white cells live just 18 hours, while others live for many years. Now let's take a closer look at the different types of white cells and the role each plays in protecting the body. There are five major groups of leukocytes, basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes. Let's start with basophils. These white cells defend against parasites and bacteria by releasing histamine and heparin. Heparin is a blood thinning substance and histamines are what cause allergy symptoms. Basophils are not antigen specific, meaning they don't have to determine what the invading substance is before taking action. They spring into action any time a foreign substance is detected. Next up, let's look at neutrophils. Neutrophils are a group of white cells that target bacteria and fungus. They're the most plentiful white cell found in the blood. They usually respond and multiply very quickly, resulting in high white cell counts. The third major group of white cells are eosinophils, which target larger parasites such as worms. Eosinophils also moderate allergy inflammation responses. The fourth major group of white cells are lymphocytes, which work the front lines to identify and destroy foreign invaders. In this group, there are three primary types of cells, B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells. 75% of lymphocytes are T cells, 10% are B cells, and 15% are natural killer cells. B cells circulate on the front lines of our blood and lymph systems, and they reside in tissues throughout the body. B cells primarily function to identify foreign invaders and are associated with antibodies, which we'll learn more about in coming videos. T cells are white cells that actually mature in the thymus, which is part of the lymph system. When matured, the T cells migrate to the point of invasion. T cells then surround, bind, and help kill foreign invaders. T cells also provide an essential regulatory function to ensure that the immune system is not overreacting or underreacting to any specific pathogen. Our fifth and final group of white cells are known as monocytes. Monocytes are unique in that they are partially differentiated white cells, meaning they are not fully mature. They are stored in the lymph system, circulate in the blood, and migrate to tissues throughout the body where they mature into one of two types of cells, macrophages or dendritic white cells. Macrophages ingest and break down both invading microbes as well as infected human cells, while dendritic white cells act like messengers, taking the broken down antigen material and then presenting it to other white cells, typically B cells, which will identify the antigen and then trigger a chain reaction that helps activate T cells. Monocytes are also involved in the production of cytokine protein molecules, which carry signals between cells. There are many types of cytokines. One example tied to monocytes is histamine, which leads to an inflammatory response to an antigen. In coming videos, we'll get to see more about how these white cells work together. 